Amnesty International responding to Sunak overnight say he's wildly exaggerating the issue. We've been saying all morning it is absolutely the right, the democratic right of the British people to protest. But is there a line between, you know, protest and hatred, fanaticism? And do MPs, we think of dear, dear Joe Cox and, and David Amos, is, is it becoming, do you believe, perilous for MPs? Well, good morning. Of course, there is a right to protest in this country. But what we have seen since the 7th of October last year is that our capital city has been taken over every Saturday uh, by tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of uh, people protesting about what is going on in, uh, uh, in the Middle East, but only protesting on one side, not protesting about uh, the, uh, the, the willful, disgusting murder of uh, 1,200 uh, Israeli citizens uh, by terrorists called Hamas. The Prime Minister is absolutely right, and Amnesty International has no business suggesting the Prime Minister uh, is understating the issue. Going back to what has just been said about last week, last week was very instructive indeed. On Wednesday, when people saw what was called chaos in the House of Commons, it was chaos, but Underlying it was a very, very serious issue, which the British people do need to, to recognise. What happened last week was that Keir Starmer was under pressure from Muslim Labour MPs, Labour MPs with Muslim, uh, large Muslim uh, populations in their constituencies, were very worried about the possible repercussions if they were unable to vote on a Labour amendment. Now, the conventions of the House of Commons uh, determined that the debate last week was brought by the SNP, the Scottish National Party. It was their day. Parliament allocates, House Commons allocates days for opposition parties. It was their day. So there was no way that the Labour amendment would be called because it was not their day. However, because of what Keir Starmer told the uh, Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hall, about the potential repercussions of failure to allow his people his Labour members of Parliament to vote for that amendment, there was a real risk of violence. And you saw it on the face of Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons. He was almost in tears when he said in his apology that he was worried that there might be somebody murdered. This is, as the Prime Minister has said, this is mob rule and it cannot be tolerated in the United Kingdom. If people come here to our country, they must abide by our laws, they must cherish our values, and understand our traditions. Some of our values, though, are the right to freedom to, of assembly, the freedom of speech. Those are so important and worth defending, aren't they? The, some of what the Prime Minister's saying is electioneering, surely. Sorry, did you not understand what I've just said? I've just said that though these demonstrations have become uh, so uh, serious that the Speaker of the House of Commons, he's not a Tory, he's a Labour Member of Parliament, I think he's quite a good speaker, and I think that people should take note that the Speaker of the House of Commons changed the rules of the House of Commons because he felt members of Parliament, and not just Labour members of Parliament, were potentially under threat of physical violence. So do you think you the solution have to these that demonstrations is, is making it more difficult to protest? I'm sorry? What do you think the solution is to that? Is it making it more difficult to protest? Well, th these prote protests take place with, the, with the, uh, the assent of the Metropolitan Police. And the Metropolitan Police have shown us that they are one-sided. Uh, so we have seen occasions when somebody has had the temerity to hold up a, a, a banner protesting about the disgusting murder of, uh, uh, of Israelis on the 7th of October and been asked to take them down because it might provoke the demonstrators. For goodness sake, what is going on in our capital city? I think, uh, Sir Sadiq Khan, who's a mayor... So, Gerald, I think, I think there's, a, I think you're right, and I, I, what I've been trying to say, and I'm, I'm slightly confused about the way to say it, it's probably my age. I absolutely believe steadfastly that the British public have a right to protest. What we're talking about, though, let's cut to the chase, is these protests, and I'm sure, I make the point, I believe there were thousands of people on those marches who were peacefully marching and had a right to march. However, we are talking about the fanatics, we are talking about the people who are out to incite violence, we are to, or hatred, actually. We're talking about the people who want to hijack these events. And my point all day has been, whether he's electioneering, whether he's suddenly concerned, I saw the Starmer stuff, why the hell, as you said, did the British 
Well, the Metropolitan Police stand there with their arms folded. Unless we robustly say that hatred cannot be spread on our streets, I wonder where we damn well end up as a democracy. And whether it's the Prime Minister giving more rules to the police or the police apparently defining it in a different way, hatred on the street, mob rule, whatever you want to talk it, not the right to peacefully demonstrate, has to be dealt with, doesn't it, man? I think that's absolutely right, Jeremy. And, and it is a very serious business. The people of this country do need to take note that if members of parliament are feel intimidated into voting a particular way because of a mob standing outside parliament or elsewhere in the country, people in this country should be really, really, really concerned. Who on earth is going to stand for public office if they feel that they are going to be intimidated? It's I was talking to a... Uh, a Conservative member of Parliament the other day, and he said as he went out uh, from the Commons uh, in an earlier demonstration, he was he was pretty fearful of his own personal safety, and that is what the Speaker of the House of Commons articulated last week. And it's no good saying we have the right to protest. Of course, people have the right to uh, to, to protest, but we live in a de democracy sure, in this I country. I really we want have, to understand we, what we you free, think the, the solution elections. is. It that you want the Met Police to um, to arrest more of the more of the protesters? Do you want there to be greater laws restricting the right to protest? What is it that you think the solution is that would then make MPs feel safer to do their job? No, the, the, the solution lies with the Metropolitan Police. It is their job to uh, to police the city of uh, the, the the capital city uh, of our country, and if uh, the police allow uh, demonstrators to place a sign on the Elizabeth Tower of the House of Commons, the home of democracy, uh, the expression "from the river to the sea," that is a jihadi expression to eliminate the state of Israel. For goodness' sake, can the Metropolitan Police Commissioner not understand that is deeply offensive? that it is potentially a, a criminal offence and that they should take action against yeah, it. I'm just going to give and you the view of why, Scotland this is Yard, not my view. Scotland Yard have said demonstrators at a march in central London would be allowed to use that phrase as long as it wasn't being used to incite violence or intimidate Jewish people. Obviously, we don't have a representative oh. of the police here uh, to be able to put that, that oh. case forward, um, but that's been their justification for not acting uh, when that slogan's been used oh, in the past. I, I see, forgive me, I didn't understand. So the Commission of the Metropolitan Police feel that it's perfectly all right to stand there in the, uh, in, uh, in the, in, outside the, the Houses of Parliament and to say, to put a post, uh, sign up which says, we want to eliminate the State of Israel.